welcome to Chris Parking Shooting Sports. This is the CZ457 Royal in 22LR. The Royal's actually got a steel magazine, it's five rounds, but you can use the interchangeable CZ range of five and ten round magazines in polymer format as well. The, um, the actual shape is identical, so you can use them interchangeably. I think this one comes with a steel magazine because they're trying to keep a little bit more of the um, deluxe refined feel, you know, using the walnut stock and the steel magazine rather than the more modern polymers. But there's no real functional difference between the two of them, some people were just going to prefer steel. As you can see, it feeds effortlessly. The trigger is also crisp and it's um, adjustable like the rest of the CZ457 range. Bolt lift and travel is super smooth and you've got a left side bolt release. Take the bolt out there. You can see on the bolt there are twin extractor claws and a manual ejector so that the amount that the brass is flicked out of the gun is totally dependent on how fast you actually manipulate the bolt handle itself. So if you just want a light ejection, just drawing it back slowly. If you want it vigorous, flick it back quite hard like that. This one has the 20 inch barrel in 22LR and it's screw cut half inch for a moderator or muzzle brake. The barrel's fully floating in the walnut stock. We've got stud at the front for a bipod, stud at the rear for the sling, and of course you've got a slight palm swell, although the stock is ambidextrous, but it's a beautiful piece of walnut and it's totally in fitting with the sort of price range of this rifle. The top of the action uses 11mm dovetail, so you can pretty much use any standard rings you want to, and of course. That allows you to put a night vision scope or a regular daylight optic on it in either 1 inch or 25.4mm rings, 30mm rings, even 34mm rings if you want to go for a large tube scope giving you extreme long range capability. I'm just using this with an Element Optics Helix HD on today which is a 2 to 12 scope which I think suits rim fires, certainly 2 to rim fires absolutely perfectly. It's a steel 5 round magazine, loading it's super simple. Pop in the top, slide back. You can get these in polymer as well as five rounders. You can also get ten round polymer magazines too. Well, I'm immediately impressed with that. That's at 50 metres. These are the RWS subsonics. That's put a dirty clover leaf hole in the paper target. Just slightly off zero. But when we're shooting for groups, we don't necessarily want to have the group shooting into the aim point because it disturbs the aim point and we can't see quite as well to aim. Judging by the noise and the chronograph data, that was significantly faster and it's also hit higher on target.
forgive the noise. They're driving the quad round, rounding up sheep. No surprise to see the SK match shoot very well. Well, you've seen me use the gun, you've seen it shoot on paper from the bench. Before I get too carried away with the rest of the video, I thought I'd share some of the details with you if I haven't covered them already. This is the CZ457 Royal. It's available in 22LR and 17HMR. It's screw cut at the front on this 20 inch barrel, half inch UNF for a sound moderator or brake. The barrel is fully free floating and it's stiff in the fore end. There's no intermittent contact issues. And as you've seen on the videos, you can clamp it in a tripod or a bipod or any kind of system like that and it's not going to affect your zero. The scope rails are 11 millimeters, not a problem with putting any scope on it you want. Night vision too, quite easy. You can also add a Picatinny rail. The left side of the rifle shows the bolt release here. The bolt lift is straight out there. You've got twin extractor claws on it and it's a manual ejector as you can see on the video so depending on whether you you know open it hard or slow you're going to get a different amount of ejection but it will always eject for you you did actually see me on the video you might have done so far see me fumble one because i didn't quite hit the stop hard enough but that's my fault and not the problem with the rifle as you've seen it's a five round magazine 10 rounds are available the royal happens to come with a steel mag not polymer there's no functional difference at all between them and they're all interchangeable I think, to be honest, it's part of the fact that for certain markets, people still want blued steel and a walnut stock. And I've got to say, what a pretty rifle it is. I'll cover the dimensions in a minute, but what I will also point out is that this has a proper feel to a proper size. It's not too short like some American rifles are, and you get a decent length of pull. And that length of pull is, on this rifle, exactly 14 inches, which is 357 millimeters. Perfect for me. The stock is beautifully finished. It's smooth, but it's got lovely checkering on it and you get a nice grip. And there's just enough space on the fore end for, you know, to get your fingers around it and make sure you're not touching the barrel either. Again, the bolt handle is fast. It's a little bit small, but Modern scopes tend to make bolt handles look small, and you can also put a you know small extender or something like that on it, or perhaps one of the rubber aim point type um, balls that click over the end and you get an even better grip on it. But I didn't have a problem using it. On the underside, you've got a metal trigger guard. The trigger is adjustable with the mechanism inside. I have shot, as you may have seen, many CZ457s now. They come slightly varied from the factory. 
but they all bed in a little bit after time. Some of them actually haven't bedded in at all. They've stayed super crisp, but some bedded in a little bit and I've just made an adjustment and it's stayed adjusted and I've been very happy doing that because I'd rather have a rifle that was set up to bed in and be adjusted correctly than have something that's, oh, fit and forget and it'll be just rubbish forever. The CZ is not like that. It might need a little tweak just after it's bedded in, but after that, it's beautiful and crisp. Right, let's test the trigger pull on this rifle. We'll do it in grams because I'm sure people can convert that to freedom units if they require. I know the Americans do like freedom units. And we have got, oh, I didn't press ready, did I? Let's do that one again. And that's breaking at 949 grams, which is two pound, one and a half ounces. Let's just do another one because it is a little bit subject to the speed at which you pull the thing. 967 grams again, two pound, 2.1 ounces. I'm very happy with that. And for a hunting rifle, I think it's ideal because there's plenty of space in here if you're out with gloves on and it's actually two degrees Celsius today. So it's a little bit chilly and I would be shooting, you know, I'd definitely be shooting this with gloves on if I was using it. Yesterday, it was nearly 10 degrees when I was out on the field and really pleasant shooting weather, which is why you're gonna see I did get a little bit carried away shooting because I just physically enjoy the rifle. Some of the other dimensions now, the moderator is on the end, but let's just do the overall length, which is 970 millimeters or 38 and a quarter inches. We've done length of pull. What else can we tell you? Well, we need to know what it weighs, don't we? And to do that, we're going to take all the accessories off. So off comes a scope. This is on an 11 millimeter rail, so it's very simple to add conventional rings to it. Just slide that off there. Obviously take the heavy bipod off because the bipods generally are quite heavy on rifles. Take that away there because that's going to allow me to show you the studs in the fore end and the butt, take the moderator off it. that off there and unclip the rear sling because I did appreciate this sling because it was horrendously muddy everywhere yesterday and well it still is it has been all winter and of course I can't put anything down on the floor so switch this on now overall weight is 2635 grams which is five pounds 13 ounces so there you go and this rifle is very similar to the rest of the cz457 range the action is identical the magazine system is identical you can have multiple barrel mini sets for 457s and depending on your exact stock design you can fit different barrels to it so there's nothing to stop me having this with a 17 hmr barrel as well I would need to take it out the stock, there's two screws on the bottom, that pops out, you'd have a different magazine, you'd have a different um, spacer there for it, and there are two screws on the base of the action which allow you to swap the barrels over. You would probably need a re-zero after that, it's not a huge issue, but they do fit well in the stock, and when you tighten the action screws, you do get a solid feel. I'll show you a picture of that from the inside, because YouTube don't like me to dismantle things. Here you can see the two-piece metal trigger guard, the metal magazine, and also the rifle out of its stock. The adjustability is all on the set screws on the front there, which once changed can be locked with the nut on the outside. That is the spacer in the magazine well system. If you have the 17 HMR magazine, it will be longer. And of course here we have got the, um, the two screws that fit the barrel into position if you go for interchange barrel mini sets lastly looking in the stock you can see we've got pillars in here and we've also got a steel recoil lug and that means that the rifle is securely positioned and there's no bedding stress being applied to it anywhere and you know what if i put this back in i expect it to be exactly holding zero safety catches two position forward fire rear for safe it doesn't lock the bolt handle but it's easy to use and it's also quiet. So just like the rifle overall, especially with subsonic ammunition, what a delightful gun it is to use. 
and as much as the heavy barrel with the match chamber on the LRP might be a tiny, tiny bit more accurate, this is just so much more fun to shoot, easy to handle, and of course, you can genuinely practice with it for you know more hunting style shots like you will from quad sticks or from tripods or from the bipod or prone or however you normally shoot your larger rifles for foxing or for deer and that's not to you know go away from the fact that this is an ideal pest control rifle for rabbits or hares and you are really going to enjoy the whole of the cz457 you know versatility if you have it it's nice to see the sling studs um, very securely anchored there with T25 torque screws similarly at the rear so those are not going to pull out of the stock at any time and I think the rifle is pretty much going to last a lifetime because so many people learn to shoot with the Brunos or the CZ452 which has lasted for decades they hardly, I don't think I've ever seen one that's either worn out or had any kind of problem with it other than someone messing up the trigger with their own home adjustment. Um, the 457 has every single one of the benefits of a 452, yet with great modernity, the new action, the better trigger system, the adjustable trigger system, the barrel interchange capability. And I think the 457, in whichever format you're going to get it, will last will it outlast you sorry that that sounds rude but it will outlast you and um, many of the ones that we've already been shooting probably have outlasted someone before so um i think that's testament to the cz manufacturing standards from the czechs who are just seemingly naturally good gunsmiths The thing with rimfires is, they're just good fun to shoot, aren't they? And I don't think it really matters which 457 you own. They're all equally as versatile, equally just as much fun to shoot. And although you know, some are a little bit more focused than others on specific shooting disciplines, they're all just as much good fun. I find them very easy rifles to enjoy because well, they're easy to enjoy, basically. That's a Freudian slip for you. They're easy to enjoy because they just work and they're no hassle. And you put a scope on, you zero them, you just go shooting. I'm here, I don't know, 93 metres or something I think I'm at. And what just, it's just fun. I mean, it's never gonna shoot tiny groups on a swinging plate. And it's also the fact I'm standing shooting off a tripod setup. So it's not the most precise way of shooting, but it's representative of using in the field when you're either out maybe shooting rabbits or if you're on a centre fire foxing perhaps but I tell you what let's have a go off the quad sticks as well and see how we do with that before I do that though it's worth mentioning that the forend on this rifle is solid it free floats the barrel and there's no intermittent zeroing problems because of the clamp going on here on the forend I'm just putting that as close to the action as possible allowing me full access still to the magazine system without you know just hindering that because I could put it all the way through there but then of course I couldn't swap the mags could I which is why I probably go for about there it gives me easy access and I just spin that tight 
go firm, just make sure the clamp's not too tight and we're away. Let's get the quad sticks. Before I do that, I'll load the magazine. Too many people are dismissive over 2 2 rimfire, saying it's a small gun, it's a kid's gun. And you know what? Actually, it's possibly the most valuable gun in anybody's armoury because you will use it more than any other and all the fundamentals are absolutely identical. So, there we go. actually feel slightly more stable on that. And of course operating the bolt is so light and fast. It's not disturbing the gun on the sticks. You might see me put my hand over the top there just to hold the gun stable because it allows me to pin it into my shoulder and operate the bolt a little bit more smoothly. But that's not any criticism of this gun on any gun I would do that with. Oh, we're all out. Fundamentally enjoyable. You can see the spread on this target is mostly vertical from uh, 90 odd metres because, because it was swinging backwards and forwards and the profile was changing. But uh, we're going to take a bit further step back now and just respray it. Right, the official range to target after a few strides back is 108 metres. I'm bathed in acres of mud today. But you know, this was the first CZ457 I reviewed in a magazine about, oh, I don't know, six, seven years ago before I was doing videos. And I wasn't so sure about it then. But do you know what? This is possibly one of the last 457s I'm now going to review. So I've kind of gone full circle on the whole thing. And I've enjoyed nearly every single one of them. But I do like this. I mean, I have got an LRP and I did keep it after review. I did buy it. But I tend to find myself shooting the lighter guns more just because the lighter is a bit more like being... You know, just been a young kid and just been out with your air rifle and it's just fun. And I generally have a bit of a, a routine, a bit of a system for how I'm going to shoot a rifle. But this time, today, this weather's actually nice and uh, just enjoying it. Right, let's put a guesstimate on here. I'm going to put another... I'm going to go with another six clicks. fell low. Oh, we still fell low. I'm going to put another mill on this. Oh, 
Oh, I rushed that one a little bit, didn't I? I could be doing this the easy way and doing it all prone or sat at a bench and everything measured out, calculated and I swap guns all the time. Today I just want to plink. I just want to plink and that is testament to just how much fun you can have with a 22 rimfire. Not noisy, not disturbing anybody, not critical for size of land, you've just got good solid backstop, there's no massive issue with that. Perhaps I shouldn't have chosen these ultra low noise, low velocity bullets. Because I feel as if I'm shooting quite stable actually, I'm very happy with that. But I seem to be losing a few way off target, low. And all I can think is at this distance, the velocity on these, which I think was only about what was it, about 900 feet per second was it? Tiny changes make big differences. Striking just a little bit low right on target. Doesn't seem windy, but a little bit of breeze. That's all it takes with a 2 2. I'll go back to where I was. There we go. I'm going to shoot some more now. One mistake I often make because I'm swapping scopes all the time is I dial the wrong way. And I did dial the wrong way then, and then I caught myself and dialed back the other way. Yeah, what? Let's have another mag. Because I'm working on this. I'm enjoying myself. But I'm trying to correlate the fact that I'm not 100% stable. It's not like shooting off a bench or shooting prone. And I'm trying to correlate that with the fact that I'm not on 100% certain drop dope figures. I am shooting and learning and feeding back on what I'm seeing myself. 
I'm quite fortunate in the fact that I don't have an issue with my trigger brake and my brain takes like a little snapshot and it knows when that trigger goes off it just thinks yeah I was slightly low and right slightly high and left whatever it was my brain seems to remember that Now I'm making more solid central hits, the target is swinging more, so I've got to be careful not to lose them off the, uh, off the underside. So another mag. I don't think I've ever got bored shooting 2-2 rimfire because there's always something to work on, there's always something to enjoy and to watch and I say it's not tiring, it's not audibly tiring either with the noise and it's not horrendously expensive. Just missed one. It's so easy to miss them when the target's swinging. Right, I probably ought to give up now, didn't I? I hope you enjoyed that rather unusual review. Please like, subscribe, comment and click the notification bell to keep track of the regular weekly uploads. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.